Hi, my name is Bob and I'm renovating this 1973 Egg Harbor Sportfish boat. Well, welcome to Renovation Sportfish and this episode I'm going to wrap up uh, 2018 projects. It's 2020 now. If you haven't been following along, just kind of going over the projects I did um, in previous years until we kind of catch up and uh, you know, start actually doing some work on the boat in front of the camera, which 2019 I started doing that. So we're getting closer. I'm just going to wrap it up. So one of the projects, and I really haven't shown uh, what I've been doing outside on the boat. And um, I haven't done a ton of stuff on the outside. Now, uh, it's Egg Harbor here. It's uh, 73. It's one of their first years for doing fiberglass hulls uh, that era. I think in, up in the late 60s, they still did some wooden hulls and they switched over. So, I don't know if it was just because it's an early one and they didn't maybe not do the gel coat right or whatever. I don't know if it's inherent to Egg Harbors in general or, or what's going on, but this boat suffers from a lot of stress cracks in the gel coat. And the gel coat in and itself is pretty nice. So you could buff it out and it would look really good. It's not chalky or anything hardly at all because uh, they stored it inside all, all the winter time. But there does have the stress cracks. Now some of them you can tell they're from actual hits um, just by the way the crack is and there's a definite center to it and it spiders around it like a real spider would. Um, but a lot of it, and I'd say most of it, um, is vertical cracks here. I see these same kind of cracks on other egg harbors right here at this marina. It's a small marina. And um, there's a pacemaker here that has the same cracking. Actually worse than this boat, actually. Um, same era. So I don't know if it's, and that's a very similar design boat. So I'm not sure if it's just something with the design or what's going on. But that's the deal, huh? Uh, not happy about that, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, so the cracks up here on the top, I actually saw these. They are visible. Stuff down here, of course it was covered with um, bottom paint so I wasn't aware of the uh, how, how bad it was uh, until I scraped it off. Now that's one thing I did started to do in 2018 I scraped off all this bottom paint. Uh, now the boat had been sitting out of water for a good seven years by that point so uh, I was a little daunted by it. I mean I was armed with this tool I made. <laughs> it's just a regular scraper, um, metal scraper. I rounded over the edges here just so I wouldn't be digging into the gel coat. And I kind of bent the, the end of it as well. And uh, when you're looking at a 30 foot boat with this in your hand, it's kind of daunting, but uh, that's what I did. Uh, so luckily for me, uh, this tool actually worked great and the things, the, most of it scraped off really good, probably 80% of it. I was able to just scrape it by hand um, and, it, and it popped right off. Uh, the other 20% I just had to use maybe a hammer and just kind of chisel it off. So it actually worked pretty good and it went pretty quickly. Just worked on like a three foot, you know, swath of the boat at a time and just worked my way along. Of course when I got it off, then I, that's when I realized the extent of the cracking. And some areas isn't too bad, but other areas it's pretty good. So anyways, I got to deal with that. So show some pictures of that actual scraping of that, or the results of the scraping of that. Uh, then once I scraped it, I went over it with a uh, dual action sander with 80 grit paper, just to get it down, all down to the gel coat. And that's when you could really see uh, the issues that it has. Now the good news in all this was there was no osmotic blisters anywhere. And that was one thing I was worried about. Now, I'm not gonna talk too much about osmotic blistering. Uh, there's a lot of information out there about it. And since I don't have to deal with it, uh, I'm not going to have to show you what I have to do to fix it. But that's a whole other thing. What I did find was, um, some, like I said, some stress cracking in the gel coat. Uh, there's chips. Here's one here in the gel coat. And uh, things like that. 
So, first thing I wanted to do, uh, once I got all to that far, uh, I wanted to deal with this uh, bootstripe area because I wanted to repaint that. So I taped it up so I knew where the bootstripe was and then sanded off the old bootstripe and just dealt with the cracking within this swath of the boat right here. Uh, and how I did that was I talked to the uh, fiberglass guy here. He's like, well, you got to grind them out. You can't just paint over them. They're just going to come back again. And that's not going to cure it. Um, so I took a Dremel with a, a diamond kind of bit on there, ground it out, filled it with a epoxy that was good for above and below the water line, and uh, sanded it, and, uh, and that was it. I had to sand it and fill it a few times just to really get it well. And I didn't do large swaths of it. I tried to just keep it smaller areas to fill just so I could really concentrate and make sure I filled everything. And I just did a little bit above the boot stripe, probably a quarter inch or so. And then I went uh, down to probably this area here. Filled those and then I repainted my boot stripe. Now I did that with um, all grip, same paint I used on the top. I did it all on the white color, the oyster white first. Then I taped it off and did uh, the actual red for the bootstripe. So the the actual paint um, all grip comes down about maybe a half inch below this. Um, but you can't use all grip below the water line so the water probably comes up to about here. So probably an inch or so above that is where the anti-foul paint will be and an epoxy barrier coat. That's what I'm going to do below. So once I got this done and I moved down to this area and I just did from the area I painted down to the chine, grinding out all these stress cracks along this, all the way around the whole boat I did this. Um, and then filled those the same way, I ground them out, got acetone with a brush, scrubbed it out really good, and then filled it and sanded it and filled it, sanded it till it was all done. Then I put a, just a quick coat of epoxy barrier on here. Now I not, don't know if I'm going to use this brand of paint uh, in the end, but I'm still deciding what to use because I'm going to do an epoxy barrier over the whole bottom. So this is going to have to be sanded probably almost all the way off, at least sanded enough to put the, the new stuff on it when I get everything done. And that's where I ended it, right there. Um, some of the areas down under here I'm going to fix the same way. They're not too bad. If they're, if they're worse than that, which there are some areas, I may have to do something else. So I'll have to say if anybody out there has first-hand experience uh, with dealing with that kind of thing, and I've seen people strip all the gel coat right off and do it that way, uh, or I've seen people grind and fill the cracks. Um, if you have any first-hand experience uh, doing it or know somebody who's had it done and know what the results were, if the cracks come back or whatever happened, uh, leave me a comment let me know because uh, I'm still debating what to do in a lot of areas. So I mean that's where uh, we kind of left off with this hull. Uh, right now this is done like I said all the way around the entire boat down to this giant area and I still got to deal with everything else from there down. Didn't do anything on it last year 2019 uh, but this year I think I'm going to get back on it get some work done on it and uh, that's about it.
just a couple of closing thoughts uh, to wrap up uh, the talk about the bottom. Um, the good thing about all of this um, and doing the whole boat was the fact that I was able to uh, remove all the cabin sole and inspect all of this down here. Um, and luckily for me, none of the cracks transferred into the fiberglass because I did a pretty thorough inspection uh, when I had it opened up just to make sure. Um, so far, I think this area here in the cockpit um, behind me where the fuel tanks are, I still haven't been able to inspect this area, but this area isn't too, too bad down here. So I'm not expecting anything, but you know, that's um, to be determined. But um, yeah, that's the only areas that I haven't inspected um, yet. So that was good. Um, the other thing is to be realistic, um, probably not gonna really get to doing this bottom stuff uh, this year, 2020. Um, I'd love to do it this year. But my real focus is going to be up on the um, top sides, doing the cockpit, getting glass back in, just getting the top part weathered in so I can get rid of this shrink wrap uh, for 2021. And then I wouldn't have to deal with the straps and things when I'm doing the actual bottom. And I'll feel like the boat's a little further along and probably good for my um, just my motivation in general. So uh, that's what I really have to concentrate on now. I, this this uh, it can go a little while. There's no rush to do any of this. So it uh, gives anybody like a year or so to give me comments on uh, what their experience is of fixing any of this stuff. So that's good too, I guess. So with that, uh, we'll stop talking about the bottom. So this bootstripe repainting and the bottom area, um, crack filling and all that business, uh, that took me the better part of 2018, actually. I worked on that from early spring up until uh, the fall. Uh, the next project I'm going to present, um, I worked on just in like the end of the year, in December. And if you watched the last episode, you saw me removing the cockpit decking and framing. Now, in this episode, I start rebuilding back there. So, I'm going to show some pictures back there of what I was doing to start the rebuild process. And um, I'll do a little narration with that, and then we'll uh, wrap up this video. One of the things... Uh, I started on 2018 was just fixing the beam shelf which it runs along the uh, the hull and the original shelf was a piece of uh, one inch by three and a half inch mahogany and um, they attached it to the hull um, with some smaller screws they're probably number tens I'd say uh, two of them um, and they screwed them into uh, some strips of plywood three quarter inch plywood that had been fiberglassed into the actual hull and they're probably spaced about every, I don't know, maybe 15 inches, 16 inches apart. And um, there were some issues that I saw with that. Um, first off, there's only about a half inch of screw engagement in to the actual plywood <laughs> with two screws. Uh, they didn't use any adhesive or anything as either. It was just dry screwed on there. Um, the other problem with the, um, the way they had it set up was, you can see in this diagram here that the tops of the uh, beam shelf wasn't cut to match the beam. So the beams were just sitting on like an edge. Um, and you can see in some areas where the edge had kind of worn down and uh, wasn't very good. The other thing was it was so thin of a piece of wood that most of the uh, screws that came down through uh, actually blew out the back side. So, um, Basically what I had to do, uh, I kind of wanted to improve the design a little bit for first off, uh, but basically what I had to do was um, remove those and um, fill all those uh, old screw holes with epoxy and um, get that all straightened out. Then I um, epoxy the backs and the bottom sides and reattached those uh, with the screws and um, some thickened epoxy as well. So it was a little bit better. Um, stronger uh, connection there. Um, then I decided to put a second piece of wood on there. Uh, same size uh, mahogany piece, but I cut the tops flat. Um, that allows for a nicer surface, I think, for the beams to actually attach to. And it also um, gave room for the screw to actually go into solid wood without blowing through the backside. Also going to uh, use longer screws, but um, I'll get into that when I get back into the framing itself. But this is really just about getting these beam shelves uh, reattached uh, for now. Uh, another thing I'm also going to do, 
uh, later on once I get the fuel tanks out and I have some room to kind of work in there add a knee at each uh, piece of plywood strip to kind of spread the load down along that strip so it's, the whole thing isn't just resting on those two little screws at each location. episode and definitely do it for the 2018 projects so in the next episode I'll start doing the 2019 projects and as I said all along that's when I started actually filming myself doing something in here so it's going to be a little more of a challenge for me actually to put together the videos because I'm not used to doing that but I'm looking forward to it and also looking forward to uh, presenting them to everyone so until then have a good one, and we'll see you really soon right here on Renovation Sportfish.